the black hole information paradox. Where in the universe does all the quantum information really go? I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Fabio Pacucci, theoretical astrophysicist at Harvard's Black Hole Initiative and the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. Welcome, Dr. Pacucci. Hi, Tanya. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for taking some time to join us. I mean, how does a theoretical astrophysicist made in Italy spend his day? Oh, well, I try to understand what uh, the, the most black, the, the farthest away black holes in the universe uh, do and how they behave. Let's say, let's say that. Okay. You recently gave a presentation on a highly uh, theoretical topic that of the black hole information paradox. Yes. Start, start by defining the kind of information we mean there. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, this was a video that I produced with uh, TED Ed. So it's a series of animated videos uh, done by TED in order to spread ideas worldwide. And in particular, the latest one that I produced was about uh, the black hole information paradox. So the black hole information paradox is one of the biggest unsolved mysteries that we have in astronomy and physics uh, so far. But in order to understand what the black hole information is, as you were mentioning, we really need first to understand what we mean by information. So usually when uh, we talk uh, every day about information, we mean uh, something that we can see with uh, our naked eyes. You know, for instance, we read on a newspaper some piece of information or we see a red light at a traffic stop and uh, we know that we must stop. But physicists usually uh, mean another kind of information that is quantum information. So quantum information uh, is uh, the ensemble, the, uh, the, the group of uh, all the information of every particle that uh, compose one single object. Think about, think about an apple, a classical example for uh, gravitational uh, physics, you know, starting from uh, Isaac Newton, of course. Uh, uh, the, the quantum information of an apple is the uh, entire uh, knowledge of uh, the positions, the velocity, the spins of every single particle that compose that object. So that's what physicists mean by quantum information. And quantum information plays a key role in uh, our uh, understanding of the whole universe. And uh, it's very, very important uh, also for the black hole information paradox. Classical computers store data about the observable universe as on-off states of microcircuits or zeros and ones on magnetic disks. If, black hole, if a black hole stores an object's quantum information on its surface, what medium or substrate might hold that? Well, uh, it's, uh, we think currently that the quantum information that a uh, black hole can store is actually stored on the surface, on the external surface of uh, the black hole that is named the event horizon, this very uh, curious name. So why it's called the event horizon? Basically, we, because we can't see, it's like a barrier. It's, we can't see or get any information about something that is happening on the other side of the event horizon. So basically, uh, a black hole is uh, an object so dense, so, so massive, and so small in size that uh, the escape velocity from uh, this object is higher than the speed of light. So to better understand the concept of uh, the escape velocity, let's make a more terrestrial comparison. You know, the, the escape velocity for, uh, uh, for the heart, so the planet in uh, which we live, is uh, about 11.2 kilometers per second. You know, so uh, a rocket that is uh, launched from the heart needs to reach at least that velocity in order to uh, leave the, uh, to escape the gravitational field of the, the earth. The problem with the black hole is that the escape velocity is higher than the speed of light, so the fastest thing that we have in the universe. This means that nothing, not even uh, light, can escape from the gravitational field uh, of a black hole. And uh, the surface, 
so the distance from the central singularity where the escape velocity equals the speed of light is the event horizon. So what happens? When, a when any object, think about uh, the classical apple that I was uh, thinking about before, falls into a black hole, also the quantum information that uh, that object contains is apparently lost because uh, we can't access it anymore. But there are some theories that uh, currently uh, propose that uh, although the mass of the object is lost into the, the void of uh, the black hole, so we can't access it anymore, the quantum information, uh, uh, so everything that describes physically this object is actually stored on the surface of uh, the black hole, so the event horizon. And the funny thing is that uh, the more mass a black hole accretes, the larger the event horizon becomes. So it seems like more, the more information we store into a black hole, the larger is this capacity becomes. What is Hawking radiation and how does that interfere with the laws of physics related to black holes? Yeah, sure. Hawking, Hawking radiation was discovered, of course, by Stephen Hawking uh, in uh, 1974. It's uh, probably his most renowned uh, discovery. And uh, it deals with the fact that uh, black holes can lose mass over uh, an incredibly long time. So we usually think about black holes as uh, sources like objects that are indestructible, you know, because uh, uh, literally nothing can uh, uh, destroy these, sor these sources. They can only accrete mass and uh, become bigger and, uh, and bigger. But actually Stephen Hawking in 1974 discovered that uh, a particular quantum effect can lead black black holes to lose mass over very, very long times. So this is a, a particular uh, uh, effect uh, that deals with quantum physics, uh, so particles and antiparticles, and uh, this leads to the fact that black holes uh, can lose mass. And the problem is that uh, these black holes, like a typical black hole of uh, one solar mass, will completely evaporate, so completely lose its mass over an incredibly long time like mm, hundreds of billions of billions of years. But uh, although this it cannot seem like a, a very important problem, you know, because it takes forever for a black hole to evaporate, it's actually very important for uh, physics, you know. The problem is when the classical apple that I was talking before falls into a black hole, then its quantum information can be stored on the surface of uh, the black hole itself, uh, following some of the theories that are currently proposed. The problem is uh, uh, over long periods of time, the black hole will start to lose mass, so uh, the black hole will shrink. And uh, the problem is uh, that the photons, so the particles that are uh, lost by the black hole, seem to be completely unrelated to the information that uh, the black hole is stored. So if the quantum information is first preserved on the black hole surface, and then this surface shrink shrinks because the black hole is evaporating, then what happens to the quantum information that uh, the black hole was storing? It seems to disappear. And uh, this is exactly the black hole information paradox. So we know that black holes need to store uh, quantum information somewhere, either inside or on the event horizon. The problem is then uh, that black holes then evaporate and uh, the particles that uh, are leaving, uh, are escaping the black holes are unrelated to uh, the information that they were previously storing. So black holes seem to be uh, like perfect machines to delete or erase uh, information from the universe. Centuries ago, Copernicus proposed a simple and mostly correct explanation of our solar system that rendered Ptolemy's complicated and incorrect explanation obsolete. What benefits accrue to the 21st century Earthlings when theoretical astrophysicists solve problems like the information paradox? 
Yeah, sure. Any paradox or apparent contradiction has been always, uh, has always sparkled some new ideas like uh, you were mentioning uh, before with, uh, with Copernicus or even much before that with uh, the Achilles uh, paradox, meaning that uh, that uh, led to the discovery of, uh, or to the study at least of infinitesimals in uh, mathematics. So there are many, many examples in the history of science uh, where an apparent contradiction led very smart mind to think uh, deeply uh, about the problem and uh, invent completely new uh, fields in mathematics or physics or astronomy. So even if the black hole uh, information paradox seems to be completely unrelated uh, to our uh, lives, to the life of earthlings, as you were saying uh, before, and to some extent it is completely unrelated, but uh, just thinking about uh, these very essential problems in physics can lead some days to completely uh, new and maybe unexpected fields in physics or astronomy that will clearly lead to some uh, everyday uh, improvements of our life. Dr. Fabio Picucci, theoretical astrophysicist at the Harvard's Black Hole Initiative and Smithsonian, Smithsonian's Astrophysical Observatory. If somebody wants to connect with you, Fabio, what's the best way they can do that? Oh, sure. They can have a look at my website, fabiopacucci.com, and uh, there they can find all the information and also to contact me. Thanks again for joining and talking about this mystery of the black holes. If you guys want to find more about me, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.